we are recording. Welcome to the weekly In Web Browsers and IPFS GUI Team Sync Call. As is customary at this point, we shall do a round of what I've done last week, what I hope to do next week. Um, it's usually a to go first, but looking at the document, I think it is Arik. Arik is not here, so I'm going to let Lidl go first because uh, it's customary. Uh, we can't hear you, Lidl. There How about now? Perfect. Okay. All right. Uh, so I'll be very brief today because I need to just like drop. Uh, uh, right after giving my update. Uh, well, not update. Updates are in the doc. Uh, so <laughs> if you're interested in boring stuff, uh, it's everything I want to mention right now. Uh, what I want to mention is thing that needs review. Uh, so per site redirect opt-out is a feature that been, that's been brewing for some time and I basically just decided to go and uh, start the review process. So this is like the current version, how it looks like. Uh, there's like active tab section, which is visibly separate. Uh, and you have uh, this uh, toggle for enabling or disabling uh, global redirect. And in the place where you had a global redirect previously, you have a toggle for only the current uh, website. So when you are on a website, you toggle redirect status uh, only for that one website. And uh, when you add, when you disable redirect on a website, the, that uh, host name is added to this list. Uh, it's a very basic and crude UI, but I just wanted to get it out of the door. So it's uh, sorted uh, uh, auto alphabetically, and it, there's a basic validation if the host name is actual an actual host name. Um, and this is how it looks like in action. So you basically have, uh, oh gosh, I stopped sharing. How embarrassing. Let's try again. Yeah, so basically you toggle, uh, and if you are on the DNS link website, uh, it just uh, restores uh, the original URL. And uh, the toggle itself has a small animation and it works the same as the old toggle. Uh, so I asked for the feedback uh, and some of you already provided uh, about the, like the visual part and stuff like that. But I would really appreciate more eyes on this because uh, this been, I'm like, this been requested for a long, long time and uh, it's kind of embarrassing. We did not implement it sooner. So I hope to uh, pass, like finish the review, apply or the UI updates and uh, release a better uh, version of Companion with this feature so we can like ask people for uh, like e using it in, uh, in the wild in, in the beta channel next week. And another interesting thing is that I got a HTTP server working on, in Brave. It's sort wow. of a low level. <laughs> yeah, so it's like low level stuff, but it's uh, interesting because it's not the raw HTTP server is the happy 18 that JS IPFS uses internally for exposing uh, gateway uh, when it runs in node environment. And in Brave, we have access to additional uh, Chrome sockets APIs. And you can see here, uh, this little HTTP server is basically happy, the same version that runs inside of JS IPFS exposing uh, HTTP server and uh, replying with a valid response. Uh, are, you, are you saying we're exposing an HTTP web server from a browser? Yes, from HTTP web browser. I feel, I feel like you buried the lead a little bit. <laughs> yeah, so like uh, the JS IPFS itself does not start. So this uh, happy instance is like standalone one. Uh, there are, there's, uh, there's an unrelated bug uh, in uh, latest JS IPFS, uh, but I hope we'll resolve this quickly and get, because uh, we got happy working. So basically I don't see any technical reason we would not have the actual HTTP gateway from JS IPFS. We just need to make JS IPFS to start. There's a lot of polyfills 
for network and HTTP libraries from Node that we like we, we replaced with the Chrome one uh, once, and there may be small mismatch. So there's uh, some work uh, that needs to happen, but it's sort of exciting. Yeah. Is this, and, is this something yep. that um, Brave is, these APIs that Brave is opening up to blessed plugins? Oh, yeah, yeah. We, like IPFS companion ID is already blessed, and we are working on IPFS branch. Uh, if you are interested in details or if you want to, let's say, build Brave locally and play with this, uh, there are instructions in this uh, issue. And I, I, I post uh, like updates uh, here with the next steps. Uh, yep, so the plan is to have IPFS companion running in Brave without external daemon, and it would be like self-contained IPFS experience. Uh, and that's it. And like my plan for next week is to basically merge, re get reviewed all the remaining PRs and release new beta of companion. Uh, sorry for uh, quite all right. so long. No, it's great. Um, there's, there's good stuff on the companion per site redirect issue as well that's worth digging into. Particularly, uh, Hugo has just dropped some radical new rethink of how the companion menu might look, which I quite like. Um, yeah. Probably I won't. probably extract it in a separate issue, I think. <laughs> probably one for the subsequent yeah, yeah. I like some of those ideas, yeah. Super cool. Um, okay, next up, I will be representing uh, Enrique. Uh, so let's share my screen. Da -da -da -da. The highlight on Enrique is da -da 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 -da. difficult to difficult to talk about one of the things he worked on without talking about one of the things I worked on. So uh, I worked on IPFS DNS deploy. So this is a Docker image that gives us these exciting website added to IPFS. Uh, status updates on peers. Um, and it also bundles our mechanism for updating uh, IPFS uh, domain, uh, DNS, DNS link things. So these are tier TXT records um, that point your domain to a IPFS address, a CID or open address. Um, so this is how we deploy our websites. Um, so I rolled that out and then uh, Enrique got excited and made DNS link Cloudflare. So he has created a tool that lets you update DNS link records if Cloudflare is your uh, DNS provider, which is very cool. Um, oh, and to see, see things in action, like here is a real pull request uh, that has an IPFS uh, deploy status. So this gives you a preview of your site, and if you click the details, it'll take you to a preview of the site. It, you know, depending on uh, how long it takes the gateway to find the content, which sometimes not so rapid. Ah, uh, just a um, It's been pinned to cluster, so I'd expect this to generally be fast unless the gateways are doing a lot of traffic. We'll come back to that. You get the point. Um, you pin it. You get a preview link. It's real nice. Um, what else? Oh, the, I guess the most important one for us was um, there's been a release of IPFS desktop. This was mostly to test the auto updating process, which happened flawlessly on at least two Windows installs, uh, and happened. It happened on OS X, but what happened was you got a notification that there was a new version of the app. You, it said click here to install and restart and it you clicked here and then nothing happened but if you manually restarted the app you got a new version so the auto update is almost working on OS X and is totally working on Windows um, so it's likely there will be a couple more release candidates of OS 7 before we say it's ready for everyone to install the, the, it, I'm determined not to shout about desktop until auto update is working smoothly because it wants to be the, uh, the easy path to staying up to date with the latest OPFS release. So if we roll it out and it has a flaky auto update procedure, that's just going to lead to lots of difficult to debug uh, complaints from people. So uh, progress, but not quite finished. 
some other stuff. Um, what did I do? Yeah, I released everything. Uh, then, of course, I've become the CI person. Not super exciting. Um, the analytics PR. We probably will circle back to that. But the, the important news for this call is that this long-running branch to get analytics into WebUI is merged, which is good. Um, and I think Diogo was saying that his internet is bad. So I'm going to probably have to say from his point of view, there's been some exciting stuff too. Not least, the React Virtualized branch is totally merged and working. So this is the XKCD archive in my uh, web UI. Uh, so this is the 2.4 release of web UI running in my browser. And this thing has thousands of entries. But the trick here is um, it's using React Virtualize under the hood. Uh, with a window scroll listener. So you can keep squirting in as many, many file items as you want. But I think there's a couple of thousand in there. Um, if you scroll really fast on Firefox, it does this funny thing with the IPFS bar. Uh, I haven't seen that in Chrome yet. Uh, so we need to keep studying that. But the key point is we are closer to being able to render thousands and thousands and thousands of directory entries in there and we still got all of the usual magic of file drop and moving things around so that's great uh, i already touched on it but the other thing that the other did was we pushed out da, 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 the version 2.4 release <gasps> so we had a bunch of improvements to the file manager uh, these have been going on for the last couple of months um including things like uh, we've separated out the creation of a new folder from the add menu. Hello world. Uh, that's got its own separate thing, which simplified this drop down menu. We stuck with this problem of do you want to add a file or folder? Uh, because you can't, you have to choose. For, there's no web API that lets you add either a file or a folder. Uh, and also then we have this add from IPFS path, which lets you import CIDs directly. This is all functionality we've always had, but um, it's now easier to get folder. I think the other cool thing is now easier to drop things on web UI. Like you used to have to drop it like right on the folder you wanted to get. You can drop it way over here. You can even drop it on, curiously, you can even drop it on other pages now. But that's great because, you know, who wants to think? Don't make me think. Just let it, just make it, just do what I meant. Um, so that will import it to the root of your MFS because it has no more information to do. Um, so there's some of the highlights of the two got four release. And also what we've done last week is we've done a first pass at defining what's going to go in the 2.5 release. Uh, pithily called the help from my friends release because it is about adding a help system to web UI and it's about improvements to the peers page. So, you know, made sense to me. Anyway, uh, if you're interested in the conversation about what should go into the next release of WI, uh, you should get involved in issue number 978 on the Oh, that was a whistle stop tour. Um, I think Diogo will shout at me if I've missed anything else, but mostly he's been working on uh, improvements to WI that we have listed. Okay, Hugo, if you like, if you got anything you wanna you wanna share with the crew? Hugo's putting his ears in. Hey. Hey. Yeah, uh, my internet's also not that good. I'm using my 4G on my phone, so bear with me if this thing breaks. Uh, so what I've been doing. Lots of uh, Travis stuff, uh, lots of bundle size stuff, uh, and the highlights are probably uh, if, if anyone still uh, cares about pull streams, I have uh, I have created a pull stream to stream module that actually returns a proper readable stream three. So if uh, you have some code path that still needs it, you should use uh, the one I have on the doc. Um, the, 
LibPHP button size for requests. It's done. Just waiting on the release. Uh, the HTTP client is also done. Waiting on the release. And the uh, JS IPFS uh, is not like pushed yet, but uh, locally uh, I have rebased everything. Everything is working, just surprising. Uh, I will push, push uh, to get up as soon as possible and then just end up waiting for at least like PHP to release and the bundle size stuff will be finished. We still have some readable stream du duplication uh, because of a uh, couple of models. One of them is the buffer list. Uh, I also have the link uh, in the docs, in the doc uh, with a pull request from me trying to upgrade it. Let's see if they merge it. And a couple of more um, packages still use the old readable stream, but that will get sorted out. I also reviewed Lidl's uh, pull request and made a little prototype with some ideas. Um, the main one related to the pull request is that, um, uh, in my personal opinion, I like uh, toggles with a clear, explicit uh, label text that explains basically the feature, and then you know that either you turn it on with a toggle or you turn it off. No, I don't really think it's a good experience having the sh the text changing when the state changes either off, non. Always always brings like confusion in which one is on and off. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna share I'm gonna share the uh, thing you did because uh, visuals help with these discussions. Yeah. Thank you. Um, you go drop to this on the world the other day out of nowhere. So, <laughs> um, am I doing it right? Yeah, it's loading. Uh, it's done. Uh, so he goes like, "Why, why do toggles not look like toggles?" And in his proposal, he's like, "Redirect to websites would look like this." Uh, it's a very good idea, and like, we actually have this toggle. I think it's like we had it before for switching between embedded and remote node. Yeah. Can so you, we, ba can, we basically can you pass the uh, mouse. Yeah, that's the tooltip. Yeah. Oh, let's get it. On the text, on the text, over the text. Redirect websites. Uh, Should be there. Uh, the script on this page is slowing my Firefox down. <laughs> I've got too many. <laughs> too many. Oh, yeah. oh, it's oh. nice. Yeah, great. Yeah. Um, but this is such a radical departure from what uh, companion looks like today that it's definitely something to discuss on a separate PR, but it is this. Yeah, basically for that specific pull request idea is to like, instead of like changing the text when you click it or unclick it, just add a, a, a toggle with just uh, with the current uh, interface, of course, mm -hmm. but the, the suggestions to be specific about what it, the feature is and just have a toggle instead of like yeah. changing the text. Yeah, I think yeah. that's that's a reasonable uh, change. I probably will squeeze it into uh, the PR tomorrow. Yep. Yeah, I think, um, it's also a great uh, demonstration of how to make UI proposals if you are able to. It's, uh, it's really helpful to be able to play with it and see how it works. Yeah. So, uh, blockers, basically libphp and JS IBFS release. Uh, for the rest of the week, I'll be um, identifying uh, all the packages that don't, uh, that don't have uh, dependencies. Uh, this is related to the um, async await and the async iterators uh, endeavor. Basically, we had a meeting, we talked a little bit about it, uh, and we decided to start merging the low-level packages and then stepping up to the more complex package until we get to libphp and jsipfs. So the first step is to identify uh, all the repos that we have that don't depend on a a a any other repo, start merging those, uh, and if we like we upgrade, we bump 
uh, a minor or a major. And then everything involved will be a sync await. And if we need to export something, it will be either a patch or a minor on the previous version. That's basically the plan, the, the plan going forward. Uh, uh, more, I'll be hopefully uh, integrating the benchmarks on the CI and finish the JS APFS bundle side as pull requests. Nice. That's it. Uh, Anyone great. has any questions for me? Any questions? No questions. All right. Um, Terry, do you want to comment? Yeah, I uh, have not been accomplishing much other than watching doctors do stupid things, but I am still working on that file API. Um, I haven't talked to you guys, I think, since I was in San Francisco with Portia and Michael. And uh, Michael and I have built the functionality that will let you upload a file into ProtoSchool. We haven't worked on any content that teaches you about the file API yet, but you know, we've got a file up there. We think we may be able to actually keep that file, like get it moved from one lesson to when you click the next button to go to the following lesson. Maybe we'll still be able to let you work on the same file, which would be lovely. Um, so we're making progress on like the structure that enables us to have lessons about the file API. And then I need to dig more into what we are actually teaching in those lessons and create the rest of that content. So there are links here to the um, issue and PR for that. If anyone wants to weigh in on anything, please do. Uh, Ollie, we still need to connect about that IPLD Explorer bug that people in Proto School keep commenting on when they uh, try to click on things. One of the um, related points to that is um, the old CI system that the released version of Explorer was on uh, was hosting its own uh, IPFS node. And then, so then when we shut that down, some sites that had been deployed from there and perhaps hadn't been loaded into many people's local nodes would then certain resources were then very difficult to find on the network. So it may have been related to that. So there's been a new deploy of IPLD Explorer uh, two weeks ago. Um, so it'd be interesting to test that bug again and see if it's still exhibiting the same problem. Somebody reported it within a few days okay. again. Okay. So we can look at it and see where you think it's coming from. I'd love to understand that better. Okay. Um, and figure out how to answer the people <laughs> if it's not something we can fix immediately, either remove the feature or whatever. So they're not just sitting there staring at the screen. Um, yeah, and then the other thing I'm gonna do, I'm not really clear on what's the best repo to put this in for IPFS, but I have a, an OKR to build a product school roadmap by the end of this quarter. And I'd like to connect with each of the project teams, or at least most of the project teams at PL, um, IPFS, IPLD, et cetera, and ask them to spend some time looking at the roadmap and thinking about like what content could be surfaced in proto school tutorials that would be useful and help achieve their goals. Like if we're focusing on package managers, what's the content that's beginner friendly, can work in a web tutorial and helps you achieve that goal. Um, some of that might be content specific to events, right? Like IPFS camp, are we leading something in that that can be put into that format. And once we see what the requests are and what the teams hope we can do, it will either be saying, listen, you guys are gonna need to do a lot of this work and I'll help you with the editing or making a case to have more people specifically hired on the proto school team or the individual teams to make that happen or whatever. But for now it's just brain dump about what kind of content would be appropriate or if there's a feature missing from proto school that would make your project be able to be taught about, et cetera. So um, I'll share the link to that when I have the, the issue going for people to dump ideas in. But obviously right now for IPFS, that file tutorial is the top priority. So teach you the file API. I think that's about it for me. Super cool. All right. Um, Jim, did you want to add anything? Well, I just uh, last week I went down to Portland and I uh, had coffee with the uh, Gozala chatted about Lunet stuff and I had ideas, he had ideas. Nice. And then also with Kyle, who's been running the web gateway, so I've had lots of interesting talk with him. And uh, dev.peerpad.net or dev .peerpad.net is deployed. So thanks, Ollie, because I would have never figured that out. And 
it, I had to tweak a little something, but uh, it's, it seems to be working. So uh, I'm pretty excited about that. Um, hopefully we can cut the, the main peer pad over pretty soon. Just need to get the, I don't want to cut it over until people um, can type documents in it and they never lose them. So uh, there's a few things I have to do for that. Uh, but I'm really excited about that. And, That's very uh, cool. Yeah, so, um, and uh, I think I'm going to be switching over into a mode where I'm searching for collaboration uh, um, opportunities I can do with other teams uh, using some of the peer-based technologies. And uh, I think there's opportunities perhaps with uh, on the web side of things. Uh, so. Yes. If you have any ideas. And uh, I want to experiment more with Lunet and stuff. I had a lot of crazy, crazy ideas, but uh, I don't want to go into them. <laughs> the, the highlights are like um, every quarter, WebUI wants to include something that makes it really easy for people to publish a website right from the WebUI. And every quarter, we're like, mm, that's probably we should, something that we should all focus on for like a whole quarter. But if you have ideas that are already pretty well formed. Um, it would be great to to collaborate on that. Yeah, I've got, I've got some ideas here. So. I know that that was definitely what you've been demoing previous weeks, like the the, the outline of publishing direct. Mm -hmm. I've, I've got some pointers we could do for that. So we should probably break that out. So. Mm. Um, I'm not sure if there's an issue. I think it's on IPFS GUI that there's an issue about um, publishing sites straight from WebUI. Even so, um, feel free to start on, and we can move content around. Okay. Thanks. Cool. Andrew Nesbitt. How Hello. you doing? Hey. I'm all right, thank you. It's very warm here. It's unusual. You mean the welcome you've received? Uh, yes. Also, the <laughs> English winter weather is 21 degrees. In it is. I described very... this as, yeah, the very difficult PR of climate change. Because for you, to, you get it's become oh, this is great. Un, unusually pleasant. Yeah. Uh, let me let me share my screen very briefly. This has got nothing to do with uh, desktops or web, but is cool. And Ollie asked me to come in and share it. Uh, da -da. Go share. Um, so this morning I was hacking on uh, Homebrew, the Mac uh, package manager. And I managed to get IPFS support added to it. Uh, obviously, it's not been merged in uh, upstream, but basically, we have the nice thing about Homebrew is all of the registries enclosed inside the Git repository, including all of the metadata and the URL to go find uh, where the actual package is. Uh, and this is basically a script to tell it how to install it uh, after it's downloaded it. What I did was added an uh, IPFS hash of this tarball here um, as an extra field onto my fork of Homebrew and then updated Homebrew itself to be able to recognize this IPFS um, method, which didn't take a huge amount of code, basically uh, adding a download strategy. They already have a number of uh, Git and SVN and other kinds of things uh, and here's the like the magic call out to the IPFS uh, binary once assuming that you're already running the daemon then it will say get this hash put it here and then everything else just works um, where I have a little screenshot here uh, it basically then will say fetching the hash via IPFS puts it in the cache location that the regular homebrew would and then runs everything as if uh, it is none the wiser to how it downloaded that stuff, which is very cool, uh, resulting in, if you haven't tried the SL program, it's great. You get a little train run across the screen uh, when you're accidentally typing uh, LS. Uh, and I messaged the homebrew maintainer about it and he thought that was a very cool thing to do. Um, I don't know if we'll get it merged in anytime soon, but it potentially means we could have quite a large package manager supported uh, with um, without needing to do a huge amount of kind of hosting costs because it's all uh, 
nicely distributed by putting the registry on GitHub. And then anyone who happens to have those packages, uh, it's essentially just using the, the URL store, which I think is still experimental in Go IPFS, but should probably, it, it seems very stable and good to me. So we should probably turn that on. Uh, and then someone can just upload all the packages and uh, pin them uh, so that they're then available for lots of people to use. Is it? Super cool. I suppose then the, um, the ongoing process of like making sure that future additions get added, that would be an interesting service to run, but it's great. Yeah, it's, it's basically, they have the, the, um, the bottle bot that uh, builds the binaries already. That's the thing that this doesn't support is, is binaries uh, that are already pre-compiled, but that wouldn't be too much work to add in. Very similar process of saying like, here is the IPFS hash to go find where the binaries are, which is different to where the original source is. Uh, and then you could watch the repo anytime that there's a commit, go right to the uh, IPFS fork, um, or even just like have that as part of any pull request that gets sent. Also, like add it to IPFS. Super cool. But the fallback that it's always available on HTTP if, mm. uh, if you can't find it otherwise. It is an ideal arrangement. Communal bandwidth for the popular, HTTP fallback for the rare gems. And, and but the, like having a package manager on IPFS without having to boil the ocean is a great win. Yeah, there's also they heavily use uh, Homebrew on Travis and Circle CI. Anytime that you're running like iOS mm. tests or macOS tests for your apps, uh, it will do brew install stuff. Mm. So the nice thing is it maps a name. You don't need to change anything. It could just be like, oh well. Suddenly, all these uh, CI machines are also nodes in the uh, cluster or swarm or whatever the word is for <laughs> a group of IPFS people. Yeah, I think it's a swarm. Uh, very cool. OK. Any questions for Andrew? Very good. Then watch this space. More coming. More. Um, that is everyone's catch ups. Uh, Thanks. I was going to talk about analytics, but it isn't so exciting. Um, moving on to the agenda, which is the words that were muted. Um, just that uh, there's now a PR, there's, there's the latest version of WebUI includes a uh, self-hosted analytics system. In it. The latest version of WebUI calls out to a self-hosted analytics service. Um, the problem is that we worked on this, uh, you know, as a working group, we pedaled and pedaled and pedaled. But as, an, as a project, the IPFS org uh, is looking to get better understanding of the size of the ecosystem and who's using what. And then as developers of the web UI, we're looking to understand which features of the web UI as it exists, people are using and which features they're not using and to just do that kind of standard thing of try and get some numbers to help guide better decision making. Um, but also it's a difficult, like the whole, the word analytics now is fraught with, uh, I think Facebook has ruined it for everyone by tracking way too much data and mining it for reasons that were not obvious. Um, so the conversation is now finally started around what would be an appropriate form of metrics gathering for IPFS, specifically for Go IPFS at this point, but it's a useful conversation for us to have as an org because I think people are also concerned about the fact that we have Google Analytics uh, deployed on a lot of our static websites like IPFS.io, the, the front door to the project is using GA and uh, people have pretty strong feelings about that in the sense that a lot of people feel that we shouldn't have, we shouldn't be throwing user data at a third party, which is reasonable. Uh, so the good news is like the self-hosted county instance, which means that IPFS is collecting data that only IPFS owns. And we 
have a privacy policy and we say we won't data mine it is that's better than throwing people's data at a third party uh, the conversation that needs to happen is now what in what form is it okay for web ui to track user actions at all um so there's a pr for that uh, sorry not pr an issue and uh, let me let me dig it out I'm going to dump it on the call. Maybe I'll share my screen so that it's on the video. Not this. I am doing this. Uh, the issue number is 980 on the web UI repo. And uh, it's good because uh, it's just like a very thorough ex expounding of like what would be seen as acceptable metrics gathering for Go IPFS's purposes. Uh, and I've taken a bit of time to write up the analytics system that WebUI has in place now and have dropped in all the data around like, what happens. Um, so if you're interested in that conversation, it's 980. Um, more exciting, we've got a new release to plan for WebUI for that collection of divs and act actions that we know and love as the IPFS WebUI. Um, the proposal for the next release is to focus on an unobtrusive help system to onboard new users. Um, that and improvements to the peers page. Right now, the, uh, you get things like this. So if you turn your IPFS daemon off, until you fail to connect. Uh, so then the peers page right now is um, a glorified map. Uh, we use IPFS Geo, uh, GeoIP to look up uh, the estimated locations of other users based on their IP, which is kind of great, but there's no interactivity. It's just a list and a dot on a map. So one feature of this uh, next release is we'd like to make that better. Uh, particularly, we'd like to uh, allow you to connect to specific peers who you haven't already connected to. Uh, also, to highlight peers who are on your local network, uh, this is like you should move away from a world map and dots on a map. It's, it's kind of fun, but doesn't doesn't provide much real utility. Um, so, more what would be more interesting is to say, oh, like you are on a network with someone else who's running IPFS. That's interesting. Or you are there are peers in your network who are regionally near to you or IP address near to you. Um, and also, I think we now have latency information on the peers list that tells us which peers you have a low ping time to, so which are networkly near to you in terms of if you're going to transfer a lot of blocks, it'd be interesting to know that these people have a quick, quick network. Um, if people have other suggestions for things that they would desperately like to see in the next release, uh, issue 978 is the place to go and have that conversation. If anyone on the call now has things and thoughts and feelings about that, do, do share Hello. Oh, <laughs> just just teasing. Is there any way to associate like a nickname with a gobbledygook peer name? So uh, I can just write Ollie and myself. I'll be able to see it labeled as Ollie when I come back. The uh, yeah, the gobbledygook peer ID um, is that is there is no way to do that currently. Um, okay. And that is high on my list of things to fix. Um, yeah, I haven't added it to this, but as you've raised it, I might reconsider that. If you could go and like mention that that would be something okay. you care about on the issue, that would help. Yeah, and then is there already like, so let's say I can't make it say Ollie, but I can pick like my three favorite and then try to remember that they were Ollie and Alan and Whoever, right. is there already like a favoriting thing planned or feasible? No, it's, that's the, it's the worst. It's just a list. Okay, cool. I will go and add suggestions. Andrew Nesbitt. And please ignore them if they're completely impossible. But no, we've, we've wanted a way of being able to translate a peer ID to like, oh, that's my friend. That's Terry. Like, she's online. That's great. Because um, uh, it also ties in with like the ability to make like ad hoc uh, pin buddy clusters. Like you don't need to necessarily run all of, you don't have to have a server running IPFS cluster. Perhaps you just have a group of friends large enough that 
say you were in an organization that had people all around the world, like you could sort of ad hoc agree to repin each other's uh, pins to get that content distributed globally. Andrew, did you have a question? Uh, I don't know a lot about the pin, the peers UI at the moment, but is it possible to see how many other people are sharing the same file as you? Uh, so there's an API call, um, it's DHT. I, I've been using the API call in the terminal earlier. Um, yeah, the problem with the find props call last time I tried it was it has, it takes a long time because it's counting the network. Mm -hmm. So it could give you a wrong answer quickly, or it can give you a, a progressively <laughs> less, less there wrong some, answer. Like, is there anyone, if I looked no. at a file, are there any peers that have this file? What, what, what we really wanted was um, in the files view, uh, there's designs for a health, a replication health indicator, so that uh, as you go to share things, you can see if the only copy that your node is aware of is on your machine, or if it's on three or more machines, or many, like just a kind of like red, red, amber, green health indicator. And you can click it and buy Filecoin to and then, you, then you could, If it's red, you're like, maybe you'd like to throw, throw some coins at it. Um, that kind of thing. Yeah, I think the problem we have there is from a UI UX point of view, just the, the time it takes to get a useful answer out of fine probs. Like we'd have to do it very sparingly on a thousand item directory listing. Sometimes. But it'd be nice to have a button you could like request, like at least show off that that API exists. Certainly seems like something the package manager would want. Like, <laughs> I want to know that this package is going to be available. Uh, when I turn off my computer. Totally. Um, okay. Jim? Yeah, I just, uh, there's, a, there's a pretty serious privacy impl implication on all this stuff too, so. The, the location of people? Finding people's content and then associating it with people's names. And, you know, yeah, you totally. Just, you just search for controversial content and hey, there's everybody in the world and where they're located on a map um, yep. and their names. So it has to be designed sort of carefully. So, mm -hmm. uh, Or like in the case of package management, it's like, oh, there's a vulnerable package. Show me everybody who's run the vulnerable package. Oh, here's a list of IP addresses, you know. So uh, it, it, yeah, <laughs> it, there's, there's two sides to that, that coin, so. Yeah, absolutely. Um... In the scope of the the web UI work, um, I see that as like fundamentals that the IPFS protocol has to address. Um, and I don't know. I suppose the what I'm wondering is like how we need to show off what the current API can do. But it, would you kind of level it as a like, it's a bad idea to let people associate names in the web UI with peer IDs because at a, at a lower network level, we haven't done anything to anonymize these things? I, I think it's okay to name your peer, um, just as long as everybody knows that that, certain, like, that name is public to the whole world. Um, so, so I think... Um, so as long as everyone knows that, because that would just be yeah. pr private to your view of the web UI, because there's no way but to... You could have like sort of private private sharing of names as well. So if you want to share your name, but only share it within your group. Mm. So, yeah. No, it's definitely, it's worth raising. I think the implementation I was thinking of was just at, at the web UI level, just being able to alias a peer ID, but that would naturally lead people to want to share them. And then if we haven't already had the conversation about why that is a high risk thing to do, mm -hmm. then we can kind of lead people down a slippery slope. Yeah. PeerPad actually does do the, allow you to uh, label your peer ID in PeerPad. Um, There's a little thing you can click on there and add your name to it. Yeah. Uh, I don't think anybody's ever used it, but it's there. <laughs> um, I think Filecoin lets you do that with your node as well. It certainly lets you alias your node. So it's, it, it's interesting that um, IPFS hasn't adopted that feature. Only interesting, and I think that it hasn't been a priority. But it's interesting that that one quickly realized that there was a value in being able to alias nodes sometimes. 
All right. Um, I'm, yeah, I'd be really interested to talk about unobtrusive help system. If anyone has any experience building help systems for WebEx, um, I have some thoughts about it. But um, if anyone has any examples of particularly good help systems in web apps, please add them to issue 979. Um, I'll put that in the chat. Yeah. Just, yeah. The, the anti pattern is the tour. You know, you, you open yeah, yeah. up the you install app for the first time, yep. and it's like 20 pages of like click here, and there's a little bubble, and you click. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's the pattern? Well, the anti pattern. It's I think even Slack was do, doing it where it was like, oh, you're new to Slack, you know. Here's, yep. <laughs> here's a quick tour. Uh, I think it, it was because their UI was confusing enough to new users that they had to put a Band-Aid on it, so. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Um, have you got any examples of good patterns? I think the thing that sets a good one apart is you don't have to explain it. Right. So, yeah. As in good web apps don't need help? Yeah. Or but. I think uh, I think video games are the best place to look in terms of you know you start a game and it sort of unfolds as a story. Yep. So. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm I'm hoping to keep the web UI's interface as simple as possible, uh, so that it doesn't need a huge amount of explaining. The problem is we also have to explain a lot of conceptual surface area for OPFS. I see the job of web UI is. Is kind of educating about the network underneath. So even if we can make the buttons reasonably clear and the actions that follow them reasonably clear, we still have to help to build up the mental model of how what's going on underneath. But yeah, I wonder if we should actually include some proto school modules like right in the web UI. Yeah, this is this is the kind of stuff I was thinking about. But certainly, like what is the how do we interweave this work with proto school work? Certainly, like the easy one is like linking out to proto school wherever relevant uh, maybe building a walkthrough in proto school but we, well, maybe that's your like narrated storytelling introduction to the web UI. that kind of thing um, i'll put some examples in there i do have a couple that i think could be relevant to this um but uh it depends on the scope of this. Do, do you look at building this out as a, an entire knowledge base for the web UI and how IPFS is used? Um, or is there something that already exists that's similar to that? Over, so the, there's ProtoSchool and there's the docs.ipfs.io. They are the major silos of information about IPFS. I see this as being, um, over time, IPFS will add more features, and its general goal is to expose as much of the IPFS API as is sensible with clear, like, here's, here's a good use case for using this API, here's purpose. Um, but I also want the, the web UI to onboard new users and help them build a mental model. Um, so I, I want this to grow over time and become really, really useful. Yeah, because actually some of the, the good knowledge base uh, systems out there, they include embedded widgets that basically kind of mimic a chat like functionality where you start typing help that you need contextually to the page you're on. And then your knowledge base associates those particular views with certain tags. So it'll also suggest articles that will be relevant for that page. And then if not, they can suggest suggest things. So it just gets richer over time. So I think that twofold in um, context really helps because it's, like, it's like you can browse the knowledge base independently, but then you can just jump straight in through a help widget that gives you like short ha uh, top hand answers for that particular page or view. Um, and yeah, that will definitely help us in terms of iterating and testing the UI and understanding like what people are having most, most problems with. So it should be an opportunity for us to gather information from everyone and see what they're struggling with. Super cool. Um, yeah, please do add, add thoughts to that issue. Um, we only have two minutes left. Anyone else got any other business? All right. This has been the weekly in web browsers and IPFS GUI team catch up call. See you again at the same time, same place next week. Bye bye.